show for you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the top of the order queue there. You aren't going to believe. The following program is brought to you in living color. guys and girls how the blooming devil are you man it's friday it's friday night live and you are here with me the number one fruit loop in all of the world the grom and it is a pleasure it's a pleasure to be here and it's most definitely awesome to see so many people already firing off in the live chats i see a familiar name mr matthew it's a pleasure to have you here this evening and everybody else all the usual suspects. Most of all, and most importantly, I need to start the show by saying, Rick, you absolute blooming legend. So guys and girls, if you are not familiar with the legendary Rick, the gentleman, the owner, the founder, the man, the myth, the legend himself that runs the Corn Life Network, you, uh, you need to go and check the channel out because he's just done a Friday night live or what he claims to be fluffing the grom. And uh, it was monumental. So, dude, Friday night salute goes to you, my friend, because uh, that was just too funny. It was awesome to just drop by. I'm sorry I couldn't have spent more time, but everything has been panicked. I haven't even poured out a brew yet. That's how madness it is. But nevertheless, as always, guys and girls, I appreciate you taking the times out of your crazy lives and hopefully tuning out from the week that has been tuning into the show and vibing out and getting ready for the weekend ahead because that's the plan that's what we're here for we're here to break you out of the mundane and the madness feed you a little bit of crazy and get you fired up stoked up and ready to rock and roll throughout the next two days before you have to venture back into that daily grind yeah i know it is madness so as always It'd be rude if I didn't start by saying I will try my very best to uh, to focus in on those live chats. As I speak, I'm even going to pull this open a little bit more to be able to get a good view on what's going on. As always, I will try if I see questions, if I see things that I, I want to pull up and uh, comment, I will try my very best. However, I struggle to do that while presenting. Don't know why I could smoke a cigarette, fly a drone and skateboard at the same time, but to keep an eye on a live chat and still remain current and uh, give you somewhat of a decent presenter, let's just say, I can't do it. But I do go back through the live chats after every show and uh, let's just say it's a shame that I can't then live stream my reaction to some of the chats because the abuse is phenomenal the love is out of this world and the general vibe is just there is nothing that beats it so uh, appreciation to all of you people that get in the live chat and you truly do make that community what it is the vibe that's in there the the welcoming attitude the just yeah so much so appreciate the hell out of all of you taking the time out to watch the lives and that is not forgetting all of you lovely people that come and watch it after the event. Now, I appreciate not everybody can be here due to different time zones and commitments, 
maybe some of you currently while I'm dropping this are actually still at work, which uh, my heart goes out to you and I just hope it's over, it's ho over soon, you're home and it's not too stressful. But for you lovely people that tend to tune in after the event, I appreciate the hell out of you guys and girls. And please feel free. If there's stuff that happens in the, uh, in the show that you wanna comment underneath, leave comments, I will always reply to them. And uh, if there is things that I miss in the live chat, like I say, if I see them and they're cool, I'll bring them up in shows to come. The other thing that I do wanna to touch on as well, because I've said it a few times in the past, which is if you are watching after the event and you wanna see what was going on in the live chats, if you click on the comments and swipe left, you'll be able to see the live feed. Now it has become aware to me, maybe, not finding my words very good tonight, so uh, yes, yeah, stay with me ladies and gentlemen. I've noticed that not every live show has that capability. Now it's really weird, a few weeks or maybe a month ago when I first mentioned it, it was something that was possible. Now I checked last week's show on like the Monday to see if I could come through and just see what was going on in the live and I couldn't find it. So I don't know whether it was just something that I could access through the app on my phone. Maybe it's not accessible at all now. Maybe something has changed within the settings. I do not know. If you can, let me know. What am I missing? What have I done wrong? What have I not set up? I'm gonna have to look through my YouTube settings and uh, do a little further investigation because if I'm brutally honest, like I've said, the live chat is absolutely epic and it's something that I want to be, to be, I don't know, like a fundamental, an after the fact, and I want it to be there and be solid forevermore because um, why not, man? I don't want to deprive the people that couldn't be here. Dude, there is some serious legends turning up. Two Guru himself, shout out to the Isle of Wight Massive, legend and i'm sure did i see or did my eyes serve me incorrect i thought at one point there the legendary alvin had dropped in but hey man chris avery debu san cockney buddha dan cov matthew tom and i'm sure the legendary corn life is already in the show he was here from the get-go Ah, now there's another gentleman, the coffee guy himself. Let's see if we can find a vibe. Can we set it off for the coffee guy? Let's get it right, if we're gonna do it. For the coffee guy himself. And on that note, I hope you've got your hot beverage, your cold bread beverage, whatever it is that just breaks you into the vibe of being home, being chilled out, and just being ready to get into the show. I hope you got it brewed, man. I hope you sat down, chilled out. Whether you're watching on television, whether you're watching on the laptop, the mobile, whatever it is, I hate saying it. You know I hate saying it, but I've got to say it because otherwise YouTube will just shun me, shun me into the furthest corners of the universe. If you haven't already, go tap on the like, go smash the subscribe, hit the notification bell, kick your laptop over, punch the TV, do all the cool stuff, fire off the hearts like you are doing, and just everything. Go like, share it, send it to your nan, send it to your uncle, tell the postman about it. The next time you have some random guy come and do some work on your house, be like, hey, dude, check out this show, Friday Night Live, YouTube, 30 year old grump, get some. Promotion over. That was it. That sponsor was brought to you by the 30 year old grump. But all jokes aside, just appreciate the hell out of you uh, giving likes, giving love and supporting what we do, man. Because if it wasn't for you, it would just be a general Fruit Loop, sat in a Hawaiian shirt with some laser around his neck, a jug of coffee, talking to a camera, all in his own, in his house. Yeah, nevertheless, I do that pretty much every day. Anyway, this evening's show, we're nearly coming up to the hour mark. We're gonna try to do it. We always push for it, but we never pull it off. Can we get into the news? Can we finish the news at the hour mark like those pros do on those like commercial media outlets? And can we actually bring you something I've kind of been edging towards forever? And that is to just, you know, clean in, clean out, pro, bring a little bit of that class to a Friday night. Can we do it? I know you're waiting for it. I know you're dying to see them. Should we do it? Should we uh, see if we can get it all right? Of course we're going to get it all right. We're like 37 shows in. 
Bang on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's Friday night. This is your Friday night live news. It's been a pretty dire week for fun facts or uh, entertaining stories, but you know us, we do our very best to do all of that research and bring you the very uh, up-to-date, most cut-in, most, you know, to-the-bone news stories that there are. <laughs> now, Andrea, let me write down here, she's familiar with Sesame Street, but this just didn't carry any weight. Myself, I am down. I know about the rubber ducky, but it is not this rubber ducky that is in question. However, this rubber ducky. Check it out. A, a rubber duck washes up on a Scottish beach 18 years after it was released in Ireland. Uh, if you've got a duck as a bath toy, you may not rate its swimming skills especially highly. They're often toppled onto their sides, looking a bit sad in a bubble bath, but don't underestimate the stamina of the humble plastic duck, as this one proved. It bobbed all the way from River Leafy in Dublin, probably pronounced that hideously wrong, to the north of Scotland in 2024, where it was picked up on the island of Stronsay in Orkney. They noticed it was marked with the words World Duck Race Island 2006. A quick Google revealed that 150,000 ducks like this one were released to try to break a world record for the largest ever plastic duck race. The ducks involved had other ideas, however, and some went in wrong directions from the, the mile they were meant to travel. Organisers were unable to collect them all and several escaped into the sea. Some went wildly off course, with one even ended up in Switzerland and others being found on Morecambe and, true guru, one of these was found in the Isle of Wight, dude. So uh, yeah, pretty monumental if you ask me. Now, let's hope you get this. If you cross Bert and Ernie, what would you get? Weekend at Bernie's? Bert, Ernie, Bernie? Oh, I know it was a tough measure, but this story is, uh, I don't know where it kind of, yeah, we might get canceled for this one, but it has been wildly broadcast all over the shop. So uh, I ain't doing anything that anybody hasn't already done, but this story was absolutely just <laughs> drop dead shocking. Cannot be shown for censorship reasons and all the rest, but, a woman willed a dead man into a bank and tried to get him to take out a £2,000 loan. A woman has been arrested after taking a dead man into a bank in a wheelchair and trying to get him to sign off a four-figure loan in her name. Suspicious bank staff filmed the pair and ended up calling for an ambulance and police as she used her hand to keep the deceased prisoner's head upright and hold him. Uncle, are you listening? You have to sign it. I can sign it for you, were her words. Um, paramedics confirmed that Paolo Roberto Barago, or ba Barago, 68, had passed away a few hours earlier when they reached the bank branch in Bangor, uh, a neighborhood in western area of Rio de Janeiro. Check me out, common in it up, right? Uh, Enrique del de Sous Vieira. This is this is like a five barreled name, dude. Enrique de Sous Vieira Nuns, probably hideously pronounced, told police after she was arrested rested at the scene that she was his niece and also the carer. Officials have appeared to signal that they were related and has said that checking the CCTV cameras inside and outside of the bank to see if Mr. Bagara's family member was on her own or with alleged accomplices. Yeah, anyway, uh, footage published by the Brazilian press showed the detainee telling 
her supposed uncle to grip the pen hard as she placed it between his fingers and encouraged him to sign a piece of paper on a desk in front of him alongside his photo ID with his name on it. Dude, I know that they say like death brings the worst out in people and uh, that obviously a lot of people turn up to get money, but this takes it to another level. Actually wheeling a deceased dude into a bank in broad daylight and trying to convince the people behind the counter that this guy is just signing out a loan for himself is like next level. And I don't even know what kind of level this lies on. Uh, ethical, uh, there's, there's some morally wrong things here. And uh, who knows? Who knows what the story is behind the lady in question? All I do know is that the internet is rife with video clips of the actual happenings. Yes, truly gnarly. Moving on from being dead to it's alive. And this story gives me some actual like, real kind of humbling feeling of, you know what? Humans, we just might actually do something good in the end, but who knows? Researchers creates nano generator capable of using greenhouse gases to produce electricity. This is pretty awesome. University of Queensland scientists have a remarkable eureka moment when they accidentally turned the most common greenhouse gas into electricity. By using positive and negative ions of different sizes, the team created electricity from CO2. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, and now believes that their nano generators could help improve the reputation of the simple molecule. Now thoroughly demonized, it pays to remember that carbon dioxide contains two oxygen molecules and one carbon molecule, which rank among the most fundamental building blocks of the universe and are used in many human society are used in human society for thousands of processes and purposes. Now, there's been some amazing in, uh, inventions through the course of history from mankind. Some of them seem to be monumental in their uh, eureka moments, but yet somewhere down the line they turn into something that could make us all extinct in the blink of an eye. However, I really have hope for this one and a huge shout out to the researchers. As much as they probably stumbled across it quite accidentally, they're the best ones, right? But just goes to show that there is hope for the humans yet and let's just hope we do a, a bit more of a better job to kind of maintain and look after the, the wonderful little resources that we have on this pale blue dot. Because as many people have used this term, but there is no such thing as uh, planet B. So uh, yeah, let's hope more people in the future come out with some brainy little numbers like this and uh, help us along our way to becoming a little bit more respectful of the planet that we live on. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was your Friday night lose news. I missed the time by four minutes. Should we get into the next bit? I reckon so. Sounds like a plan. Well, guys and girls, that was your Friday Night Live news. We tried to deliver it. We tried to hit the hour mark, but yet again, it got by. It slipped us, slipped us by four minutes because I got right into the deceased story, didn't I? Little bit too much information, if you ask me. But nevertheless, let's just uh, push that one to a side, as you would with anything that was uh, a little bit morbid, shall we say? And... Um, Take away the fact that the researchers in the, uh, where was it? Queensland, Queensland, absolutely smashed it. Uh, well worth looking into the story to see some of the other things that they have in the pipeline or what they think they can do with that technology because uh, I kind of skimmed over a few things in that article because I was hoping to get out before the hour mark. But nevertheless, it's most definitely worth going to have a little look. Anyway, moving on with the show as we do. How are you doing for coffee? That's the big question. I have a massive announcement. I have a confession to make, but it kind of also works with the madness that is the uh, the joys of extreme ownership. That one's for you, Jocko. Um, so, I did promise you all a guest this week. However, the Grom let himself down 
but not only did the Grom let himself down, he let his viewers down. Um, this week's been a funny old week, guys and girls. I don't know if you've been following the vlog. Uh, been super kind of disconnected, man. The brain has been left somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it was. And it wasn't until this, well, this afternoon, if I'm honest, that I actually reached out to my guest and was like, hey, yeah, by the way, sorry I've been completely AWOL all week and I haven't got in contact with you. Um, should we do a show tonight? And they were like, sorry, not around for two weeks. But nevertheless, the guest is on schedule and they will be here at some point in the, uh, the near distant future. But never mind, all that means is that you're stuck with me. Don't worry, I've got a little something lined up for you and uh, hopefully we'll execute it with a little bit more than we did the first time we'd done the segment. Hint. And uh, just, you know, hold tight. Hold tight, bear with me on that one. But nevertheless, the one thing that has come from this week, apart from losing my head, losing uh, maybe all the senses of kind of constructive progress in my arts and crafts and my creativity. This past week, I've spent a remarkable amount of time. In actual fact, it's actually probably the most time I've spent on the wonderful platform that is now known formally as Twitter X or X Twitter. I spent a load of time on there this week. Since last Friday, I put out a live. Yeah, check it gnarly as hell guys and girls i put out a live on twitter just to see what kind of coverage or uh what's the other word engagement big word for a friday night what sort of engagement it would get more so now i stepped away from twitter a long time ago a little bit before that it changed hands to a, a certain gentleman in the world and it was a relatively good platform back in the day I'll use that term lightly. However, there was a huge movement at one point when there was a huge movement kind of worldwide, if I'm honest, in regards to mental health. And the time that I was on there was pretty much about the same time as I started the vlog. So it's like 2018. There was a huge amount of mental health advocates. There was a, a, a quite a large community that grew in a very short period of time. There was some amazing people, uh, particularly one of them in mention was somebody that I actually thought was in the live chats. And he is. The legendary Alvin himself is in the chat. So maybe I, I foresaw it. I don't know. If there is anything that I can take away from that platform, it is the legendary Alvin because he is an absolute gentleman a god in my eyes and uh, I don't think, and this is not taking anything away from anybody else, but I don't think there has been anybody in the history of me doing the vlog, Alvin has pretty much, I'm near enough saying, shared the link to my vlog on Twitter for like four years, every day. And uh, maybe I'm going a little bit overestimation, but I'm pretty much sure to say, without fail, maybe there's been the odd day that I've missed it. But dude, Friday night salute to you, sir, because that level of support and I just appreciate the hell out of you for doing that, dude. And literally holding Twitter down and holding my, uh, my link down on Twitter and, and just sharing it every day, dude. I am working on something. I, I almost want to get a trophy or a medal made for you, dude, because that is absolutely remarkable. But going back to the Twitter situation, I thought this past week I would spend a little bit more time, a little bit more focus. I even stepped away from Instagram. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you will see that nine times out of 10, I usually share a little something to my uh, daily story. I don't particularly post a great deal to my profile anymore unless there's something awesome that I want to put out there. Stepped away from Instagram as a platform and just took a little bit of time to try to invest into Twitter. Now, as probably not really much of a surprise for some people, uh, maybe Cockney Buddha would probably share a little something into this. And that is the fact that Twitter changed very dramatically, very quickly. And... Um, I'd kind of seen it, but wasn't in it to really pay too much attention. 
This past week, I paid a lot of attention and I thought I'd put a little bit of effort in, I'd do some engagement, I'd comment on people's posts and not just like flat line responses. I would share or I'd like, you know, I would be respectful and respond and just vibe. I thought, you know, let's get out there, man. Let's see what this platform can do for me as much as what I can do for this platform. Let's just say a week on, as it is Friday, all it's done, and I don't want this to turn into a negative thing because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that really do get a lot from that platform and they enjoy it and they use it as a tool and that is cool and all praise them. However, I came away from that platform after using it for a week and felt drained, felt kind of not necessarily overwhelmed, possibly underwhelmed, if that's even a real term, um, just due to the fact that, yes, I do believe a lot has changed. I understand this and it seems to have changed to a one kind of directional thing. A lot of the people that had followed me in the day, Alvin not being one of those, literally I think it feels like there's about five people, Alvin being one of those five, that's actually still left on that platform that were a regular, a familiar face from going back to 2018. So it just goes to show out of, I don't know, 500 or something followers, how many people have stepped away from that platform. Obviously, they may have their own reasons. Maybe they're just off living their most awesomest lives. I don't know. However, I do know that it seems like the content has gone into one avenue, one avenue only, and uh, it just seems very ranty or opinionated or uh, kind of if you've got a vibe that you want to kind of make your opinion known, then you're good. You're good to go. Uh, or if you want to use it as a one-way avenue or a one-way street to just pump stuff. And man, have I seen some of the most randomest things. I was going to pull a load up, but I'm just not going to give any light to it in the sense of it's just kind of mental. I thought I was crazy. Did the only positive was, again, and I've mentioned his name a few times, but literally, Alvin. Alvin and um, there's two other people that I wanted to mention and their names have slipped me. And I'm hoping Alvin can just remind me because there are two ladies on there and I want to say one of them is of Singleton and I can never remember the other lady's name. But out of those three people, out of 600 followers, 500 to 600 followers those three people were the only people that give me some solid interaction and just made me smile shared some lovely little things backwards and forwards and had some conversations and it was just nice to almost see some familiar faces out of madness pure madness but nevertheless all i will say is if you do still currently use twitter apart from the people that i've mentioned feel free hit me up and also if you do use that platform, please enlighten me. What do you know? What do you follow? Who do you follow? And how do you go about using it? So again, currently, if you're watching, fire some stuff in the live chats because I'd be really interested. I was actually going to put a poll up on it and uh, maybe do a little Q&A on Twitter or X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, and just to try to get a little bit of almost market research at the same time, because it's completely bonkers and I cannot figure it out apart from using it as a tool to keep with current trends, news topics, politics and general ongoings in the world. But other than that, it would be awesome if any of you guys and girls out there do currently use Twitter and you have specific profiles that you follow that just bring a vibe, bring good quality, good humour and a sense of, I don't know, humanity, maybe, to that platform, please, 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 let me know, because it would be very much refreshing, and uh, it's a platform I kind of, I don't want to walk away from, but it would be nice to just kind of revitalise the fun and the enjoyment of that platform, because I know a few people that have come away and said to me, do you know what, I don't really use that platform anymore, which is fair enough, but as I say, there's been some really awesome people on there and uh, had some amazing conversations. And I don't want to lose that because it is good for that. 
However, it does just seem to be predominantly ruled by, um, let's just say, uh, members of the opposite sex showing things that really, uh, maybe I'm just old, but like, yeah, maybe I should try flashing my boobs on there and see if I get more engagement. I don't know, maybe a good grom cleavage shot might go a long way, who knows? Maybe I should cover myself with my hair and just like push it a bit. Anyway, madness. Right, so trying to get back to some relatively good, fun Friday night vibes. Let's see if we can deliver this. Now, the last time I'd done this, it was a bit short. It was a bit sweet. It was a bit underrated. But it's something that a few people in last week's show said that they wanted to see. So I'm going to see if I can pull it off. You'll have to bear with me because uh, apart from just being mental and not really what the hell is going on, we're going to see if we can deliver. Let's see if we can deliver. <laughs> Full-blown surf report, I'll have you know. And we've actually gone and tried to do it this week. Do you think the Grom looks full surf? Caught a couple of wild waves and this is it, dude. Like, fully sponsored. Living the fucking dream over here. The only thing I will say is I didn't think this through. Sunnies on the inside, while it's like stupidly dark in here. And uh, trying to even see through these glasses to see the screen. Dude, I'm blinded. Blinded by the love. So, let's see if we can pull this together. I might have to like... Give it the look. Right, so check this out. This is the Surf Report Friday Night Live brought to you by Billy Grom Wave Report. Yeah, people in the know, no. Now the legendary Billy from Hawaii has uh, hooked me up with a couple of screenshots of some spots. I wanna further this and I wanna bring some more seriousness to this, but a little bit tongue in cheek. And I don't know, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's see, first of all, if we can actually Bring you the bit that's most important, guys and girls. Let's see if this works. God, it could go hideously wrong, but wouldn't you just love it anyway? Check it out, man. Let me move this goddamn camera a little bit. Oh, yeah. Surf report. Over there. No, over there. <laughs> so, check it out. If you are luckily, if you are lucky enough to be near Carlsbad this weekend, go score, guys and girls, because it's pretty goddamn epic. Have I lost my key? Probably. So, two to three feet. I'm claiming that's grom-sized waves. If you live in that area, I'd go down there. I'd go catch some waves. It'd be epic. Saturday's looking pretty good. A few spots blown out, but nevertheless. Um, hey, man, everybody wants to get a little something, don't they? A bit like this, dude. Hopefully, if I get this right, guys and girls, this will land so hard. Don't everybody want a bit of this? Oh. I just want to get more waves! Oh. Maybe tomorrow? Let's see if we can get out of this Where's he going, man? Where's he going? I hope the camera's rolling. Why is he not coming up? Because you watch it over and over and over and over again. It's going to be awesome. Ah! One quick one to show it. Ah, me. Let's see if we can get it. It's not coming up. Ah, oh, that sucks, man. Anyway. Back to the There's this little kid on Instagram, man. He was Maybe super tomorrow? Yeah. Like, just screaming. I And I can't even get the clip up, man. That sucks. Why hasn't that worked? We'll get back to that one. It wouldn't be right if it weren't right, yeah? Anyway, going back to the surf report. If you uh, happen to live in the beautiful UK and you are in the Brecklesham Bay area, the surf don't look great. I checked a few other spots. I was going to go super crazy and be like, J Bay is scoring, Tifu's scoring. So if you're not in West Whittering or Brecklesham and you want to travel like across the other side of the world, you can catch waves. And I was even going to give you guys and girls an East Coast New Jersey surf report for a few of the guys and girls in that area. But... As always, we're gonna have to work on that one. We can't perfect it all every time though, can we? Oh, 
That sucked, man. I had these two epic little clips lined up. And it kind of messed up with some of the vibe because basically I was going to be like, everybody wants to be like this kid, right? Because he's just screaming, I want more waves, I want more waves. And then the next thing you see, he's on the surfboard catching some more waves and he's super stoking. And then I was also going to be like, dude, please, whatever you do, catch some waves because you don't want to go into the next week like this one. And it's basically this girl, bless her, she picks up, she's got, I think she's running out for a competition for like a, a round, if you want to call it that. She picks a board up, she runs across the beach and maybe halfway across the beach, she trips over a leash and just like dies, dude. And uh, I was a bit like, nobody wants to go into Monday like that. So stole it, man. And the legendary Billy is here. We will get it next time. Yeah, dude, sorry, Billy. Uh, huge shout out to Billy for sponsoring the wave report. <laughs> Let's just say I might have to shoot that presenter and get a better one in future. But nevertheless, we will work on that. And I uh, want a little bit of tongue in cheek. But most of all, I actually want to give all of you people, and especially the people that I know, because if I've noticed right, I believe the everyday surfer, yes, is here. Oh, look, he, even he's giving the surf reports. Now, this would be a vibe. Dude, hunting the beach, three to four foot, going five, four to five tomorrow. That's what we're talking about. So uh, in next week's, I might have to do, well, you know that spot, man. And what do you reckon? Especially for some of the surfers in the live chats. What, how much serious percentage? Because I'm just thinking most of you guys and girls out there are going to be knowing what your local spot's doing because you're going to be hawkeyeing it. I do it and my local spot's like 100 miles away. But I'm still hawkeyeing those surf cams and uh, just trying to get a gist of what I can get to, what's surfable, and also what kind of um, conditions look best. So there's a bit of me that says, me giving a surf report for your local spot, uh, especially like the everyday surfer in Huntington Beach, he already knows what's going down. So maybe we might have to go a little bit crazy and uh, we'll, we'll just spitball. I might even try to get a little roundup of the actual best producing spots that are not known for producing. And maybe we'll see if we can chuck some other little random things in there as well. Because I love the idea of getting some surf clips, some surf fails, and a, like a kook of the day bit. But I don't know. If you have any ideas and you want to get involved and you want to chuck me some ideas, throw them into the live chat and we'll see if we can work them into the surf report. I do almost feel like I need like a little like puppet though. Because I need a little dude. I won't feel right trying to be a dude with hat and glasses because I just don't feel like the dude. I'm far from the dude. Whereas if, like, if I had a dude that could give me the goddamn surf... If I had a dude or a hand puppet that could be the surf dude, we might be able to, like, break away from it. Maybe I should just use a puppet to do the surf report. <laughs> Who blooming knows? Anyway, we might have to buy one. We might have to find something. We need a little, like full-blown shredder don't we so moving back to grom's world as you uh as you know the show earlier rick's fluffing the grom if you guys and girls didn't see it make sure to go and check it out after the show because it was highly it was funny it was funny as hell the madness of this week guys and girls I am going to uh, indulge in this if you are not a follower of the blog which i know a majority of you are you might have kind of noticed, and if you're up to date with it, you might have even heard me say about how my head has just been somewhere else this week. Now, I've heard and listened to a lot of lectures in the past week from the legendary Alan Watts. My mind has been blown on many of occasions. The best thing to date, and if you haven't seen it already, I'm sorry, spoiler, fact of this week, and I might even drop one of these for it. Dolphins, ancestors once lived on the land, if we're being really specific. How crazy is that thought? It's one of those things where I kind of knew that I knew it, but I didn't realise I knew it. It's logical when you really start thinking about it, but when somebody drops on you, hey man, maybe the dolphins have got it right. Highly intelligent, social creatures 
came onto the land, obviously the beginning of life on Earth itself, starting from like single molecular molecules and single cell organisms, crawling out onto the land, evolving. At some point, then what, Inevit or what in the end turned back into dolphins decided like screw this man let's find the path of least resistance go back into the sea where there's plenty of fish we can swim around all day chill out catch surf and get away from the madness that's on the land they're up there i think the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy is actually telling you a little something that we overlooked i know the end message thanks for the fish and i'm thinking dude seriously the other thing that's crazy about that is last year when i was using snapchat just for the ai tech friend thing that you had and i was like if you could be any animal what would you be and it came back saying dolphin even ai knew it however it was only this it was like thursday i was this year's old when it kind of became apparent to me that yes, dolphins once lived on the land. If you don't believe me, go fact check it, go check it out. It blew my mind. And so I'm still pickled. Maybe it was that that done my head in this week. Maybe it was the setting up of a full blown like camera studio, uh, photography, doing product photography for my company, getting video clips for products to do a project for my company. So uh, yeah, don't know. Maybe it was that. Maybe it was the, the leftover carnage from the solar eclipse last week. Don't know. I do not know what made my head just lose the game this week. The icing on the cake today came in the form of, again, the legendary Alan Watts Pickle in my little head. So maybe I need to lay off the watts, man. Maybe it's just too much to my little brain. Left me with the thought of it's okay to hate things. It's okay to have feelings and accept those feelings for what they are. It's okay to want to uh, or, or to feel certain feelings and acknowledge them. It's the actions that aren't so great. So... For argument's sake, if there's somebody that you loathe, you detest, you hate, you hate with a passion, it's okay. It's okay to have those feelings. You don't have to try to suppress those feelings or flip those feelings onto the other side. So in actual fact, you want to kind of be this person's best friend and love them and like look after them and do all you can for them. You don't have to be that. You can accept the fact that you hate that person it's okay. It doesn't make you a bad human being. It actually makes you very aware of your own person, of your own feelings. It's okay. The only problem that arises for that is the way in which you react or action those feelings. So beware of that. And it was something that was worded in a situation of this. Now, if you, for argument's sake, this is this is merely hypothetical. This is just a way of putting this across. If you had a woman that accidentally had a child, didn't want that child, and then proceeded to tell that child, there, there, baby, I love you, don't worry, it's fine, but yet her milk was sour, that baby, through other senses, through key infant primal senses would be confused because it will pick up on certain things that we as grown adults have far forgotten about and that is the being in touch with this world that we are brought into now that leads to confusion however as brutal as it may sound if that mother was to be completely honest from the get-go and be like hey you know you little bastard <laughs> there wouldn't be any confusion. Now, it's a little bit brutal to say that, and I know it's a bit hard facts on a Friday night brought to you by the Grom, but there is some weight in that as a thought. Whereas, yes, you don't have to go around and vocalise the fact that if there's people in this world that you dislike, you don't have to tell them to their face. 
you just merely accept the fact that those feelings that you are having are fine, they're okay. It's actually honest of yourself because if you weren't being honest to yourself, then how the hell can you expect to be in honest anywhere else in this little thing we call life? The brutal fact is that yes, you could try to change them, but you would only be trying to change your, your primal self, your true conscious living soul, the you, the you that has been put in this incredible little experience that we call life, and now you are trying to tailor that you to become a different person that wasn't put here to be you. So be careful of that. Now there is a lot of, uh, let's just say, dichotomies to that, there is a load of caveats to that, and there is a whole nother little conversation that we can have on that, and maybe we will do in one of the vlogs in weeks to come. But it was also something that made me very much aware of the amount of effort that I've been putting in over the last few weeks in relation to trying not to have similar thoughts to that. To have similar thoughts where you're like, hey, this is my gut feeling. I accept my gut feeling, but I'm going to change my gut feeling. That is entirely up to you. I am not here to tell you how to live your life, how to tune your, uh, your intuition or your gut feeling or any of the other sorts. However, if you were sat and you listen to this and you think, hey man, that sounds reasonable. I just want to kind of reiterate or uh, reaffirm the fact that again, some guy cuts you up in a car and you're like, dude, what an asshole thing to do. It's okay. It doesn't make you a bad human being. Obviously, if you chase after him, chase him down, ram your car into the back of his car, ram him off the road, drag him out of the car and like continue to beat his head into a car door. No, ladies and gentlemen, I do not condone that. It is not a good time. It is not a good vibe. And it sure as hell is not sending a good message to the rest of the world. However, at that moment to sit there, to be aware of that gut feeling, of that instinct, that intuition, accept it, go on about your day, it's fine. You don't always have to have good thoughts. The difference between the good people and the bad people and that the good people might have bad thoughts and not act on them, whereas the bad people have bad thoughts and then act on them. Public service announcement brought to you by the Friday Night Live. So, that was a little bit heavy, but it did kind of explain to me just a little bit where my head has been at, especially when I consider the amount of energy that I've been burning on trying to change natural instincts. I'm just speaking from lessons learned and uh, I am still trying to control those natural instincts because maybe a few years ago, I would have vocalized them from the rooftops. I would have told the people in question to their face how I felt and it would not have maybe uh, not done me any good. But nevertheless, it would have cleared my uh, feeling bank and I would have been cool, la -di da moving on. But it would have caused plenty of ripples within the ocean that I call my uh, daily life. And that's not a good vibe because we're all trying to find a path of least resistance, a little bit like those dolphins I mentioned earlier. Yes, the madness truly is real, but hey, would you want it any other way? If you haven't ever gone and checked out any Alan Watts lectures and you are into philosophy and you are into uh, maybe different thought paths of religion or just want to tune in to something that is maybe a little bit educational, I would highly recommend you look on YouTube for Alan Watts Lectures Unedited. There is tons out there on the internet. There is a whole heap of them doing the rounds of little clips of little cuts and pieces that have almost been edited out of context and then thrown into TikTok videos and Instagram videos and shorts with like really chilled out, like um, lo-fi music on. Scrap all of that, go find the source, listen to it, and trust me, I will put my money where my coffee is and just say, if you were to go listen to an Alan Watts lecture 
and not get any value from it. Shit, I'll buy you a coffee. You heard it here first, guys and girls. Let's just take a few mementos to have a little look because I've noticed that this comment section this evening has been exploding. And uh, for all you people that are whacking the hell out of the heart, if your phone or television or laptop has not crashed, died, or just combust into flames, fair play to you because I never have that kind of joy when I'm doing it to other people's lives. YouTube always boots me out, even if I am a moderator. Yeah, check that madness out. So, Man, you guys have gone hardcore on the light. One other thing that I wanted to mention. Has the volume of the mic been better this week than it was last week? I watched the show back and obviously a few of the segments that I've put in, volumes, epic, monumental, cinema quality, and then the grom sounded like I was stood about 400 million miles over there talking. How's the volume tonight on the mic? Is it too much? Has it been clipping? Has it been blowing up your home theatre kit? Let me know. Let me know in the live chats or in the comments below if you're watching the video after the fact. But, see, the Stoke levels, man, the entertainment and the people in the chats, absolute top score, you lot. You really are. Right, I'm pulling. So, Mr. Rick, what is this? Grom, he never answered my questions about Barry Manilow and his wardrobe. Are you on about the wig or the glasses or what? Did you notice that, guys and girls? I decided not to wear the wig this evening. However, I'm gonna give you a little exclusive. For all you hardcores that have stayed around this long, I've gotta give you this, because this was gonna be my surf report. Get up. I know I wanna roll with a puppet, though, because I reckon a puppet would be gnarly as hell, Charlie. Dude, that wig, maybe it might have to be the hat and the wig, dude, because then it's not the sunglasses and I might be able to see while I'm indoors. What do you reckon? I don't know, dude. I reckon it's full surf. It's like a, a, a young lad Hamilton, if you ask me, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I think the wig's too much. That's why I left it off, man. I left the wig off because it was way too much. And I actually look pretty good in that hat. Shout out to the uh, official, unofficial sponsor of the week, Freedom to Dream, otherwise known as uh, Tucker F. Upper and Sammy J. Legendary clothing line. Go check them out, YouTube. Tucker F. Upper. If you go and check out his videos and you uh, happen to enjoy them, just say, hey, the Grom Friday Night Live sent me. Word up. He was wearing your hat, it's awesome, where do I get one? And uh, I'm sure he'll be able to provide you with a link because uh, I don't wear this hat enough. I don't really wear hats anymore, man. But I ain't gonna lie, it makes me look like full pro YouTube vibes, man. Surely this has just got a warrant, like some uh, some more extra subscribers. This shirt, these lades, this hat, come on. You have to let me know, what was the claim? What was the claim, Rick, in regards to uh, the Barry <laughs> Mallow low get up? The Jimmy Savile, dude, that's savage. I, I I should kick you, Mr. Cockney Buddha. You can't even speak that name no more. Funny that you bring that up because uh, there was a conversation going on at work today sparked by uh, song lyrics of the one, the only, um, the man that we do not mention his name, Mr. Rolf Harris. And if you look through a few of the songs that he was most famous for, and then you look at the context of the lyrics, after knowing the fact, eh, let's just say we'll leave that one in the uh, in the gutter. You know, we're a whole high class here on a Friday Night Live, man. We go next level, you know, bringing you the best news stories, the best surf reports. What else have I missed? Cockney Buddha's claiming two to three feet in Florida, dude. I actually looked up Cocoa Beach surf report because I was going to give you a little insight. What else? Dude, there is just so many. It's Trucker Grom, dude. Seriously, so many. You lovely viewers have absolutely outdone yourselves tonight. All I know, 
is this seriously i'm gonna be a while after the show just checking out these comments man because there is so many i was trying to just scan for any questions surf beach okay cockney buddha with a question dolphins yeah dude go check it out after the show well I, I just seriously cannot say enough about how much. If you had something to do all over again since vlogging, what would you do different? If you had something to do all over again. Not 100% on that, dude. I'm going to turn my hat backwards because it will bring me more brain power. I'm assuming I would take that on the sense that... Uh, Basically, if I was going to do vlogging all over again, what would I do different is how I'm going to just like pick that one. Um, if I was going to start vlogging now or back then, knowing what I know now, I'll be honest and uh, I'd play the game, dude. I'd come into it not from a sense of trying to be real and not trying to be like just the person that I am, the genuine, the honest, all thrills and uh, just kind of, you know, show you my best and my worst. And I would come into it more calculated and I'd play the game because one of the most greatest lessons that I've learned since doing what I do as much as I wouldn't change any of it for the world. Honest to God, I would not change anything that I have done with the vlog, because if I'm brutally honest, all of you that are currently watching this have probably somehow, way, shape or form, come across this due to the vlog. And that live chat speaks volumes for what I've gained out of the vlog. Just, I don't even know how to put it in words in relation to the vibe the community, all of the things that I could have ever wanted to build out of that vlog. Bearing in mind, I've said it once and I'll say it a million times. And that was, I never ever came into this in the sense of making it, blowing up, monetizing, becoming YouTube famous. Like all of that stuff was, is, was and is still very irrelevant to me. I wanted to kind of make a difference in people's lives. I wanted to inspire people to go out there, get after what they wanted. And whether it's like insanely crazy, huge, big dreams, or whether it's just they want to learn how to juggle or throw playing cards so that they can throw them into a hat from 20 foot, whatever it is. Or if you want to go and climb a mountain or you want to join a Buddhist temple for the rest of your life or you want to learn to surf in your middle age or late age whatever it is I just want you to realize that this life that we've been given is remarkable we need to find the balance between working family relationships not just with our better halves with our children with our already older like our elder family with our friends family relationships all of that our working relationships i want you guys to just excel i want you to find higher vibrations for yourselves i want you to believe in yourselves i want you to look at me as a fruit loop that knew nothing about what i do with the hope and the dream that one day i will learn how to surf to some degree hopefully and this is a hoping back then, started out with the hopefully one day I will be able to step foot on a beach in Hawaii and I'm good. And if I can do that in any time scale, whether I do that this year or whether something crazy comes out of the blue, life throws a curveball as sometimes it very much does, yet if it takes me 25 years, Maybe it takes me the rest of my life. Maybe I end up in Hawaii in a box just as ashes. If it gets vlogged and you guys and girls can see the fact that it was like, damn, he said he would. And that inspires you to be like, I'm going to go and join that 
Buddhist retreat. I'm going to try to learn to skateboard in my 50s. I'm 16 and everybody's telling me I need to go and get a job. But actually, I want to run off to Australia and join a, a, a science group that restore coral in the Great Barrier Reef. Go do it. Because I can tell you one thing, nobody is going to do it for you and hand it to you on a silver platter. Nobody is going to take you by the hand and lead you through the avenues that you need to do all of the little tech checkpoints to get there. But you can do it. If you want it, if you believe in it and you want to get after it, go and do it. Because trust me, the worst thing in this life to do is live with regret. And if you're currently watching this and you leave it any longer than after this show to start doing whatever it is that you're doing you'll only regret it more and more and more and push it off more and more and more until the point where it'd be too late it's never too late if you're living and breathing and you have an opportunity and you have the capability and you have the resources you can do it i started with such little idea of what i was going to do with this blog but that was the core of it and i stuck to that however Going back to the question, even though I digress massively, I would come into it with an agenda, with a card up my sleeve, with a bit of manipulation, with a little bit of tic tacs, a little bit of flanking. And I would come into this game and I would shake it up in the sense of, hey, I'm this dude, I'm super awesome. I'm already presenting to her a quarter of a million people. I don't even need you lot to know that I'm gonna make it because I knew in my heart of hearts that I was gonna make it. I was gonna get monetized. I'd get monetized. I'd sort it out and then I'd sell you. This is what you should do. Because the sad thing is, and the one thing that I have noticed across a lot of platforms, is if you come in with the game, and you play the game, you have more chance of getting to more people, and then in which case, then you can almost reverse engineer back to what the original message was. Whereas trying to come into a game that where everybody else is playing the game, and they're using keywords, and key phrases, and everybody is repeating what everybody else has already done to get to the top with an almost proven formula, then why not play the game? get to the top and then sing your message from the rooftop. But that's a heavy thought. That's where my head's at right now when you give me that question. So, a little bit madness, but unfortunately, dude, it's like the cold, harsh reality of it all, that we are here. And another thing brought to me by the legendary Alan Watts this week is to find the balance where here in, in my makeup or in the westernized world, we tend to differentiate work with play. We dress differently for work than we do for play. We go to work, then hoping we'll get enough time to play. However, the golden thing, like so many things in this life, is to actually merge it. So why can't we, and not play around and dick it off, but go to work and find play in the work we do. And then just find that balance to the point where life is just an ongoing experience that we desire, we share, we mould, we create and we structure for our own selves instead of going to a place where we hope that we can just get a little bit of a payoff. That's a bit of a heavy thought. And uh, let's just say that maybe I need to lay off the Alan Watts. <laughs> Think I'll do a podcast off this Gromster. Well, there you go, dude. Don't play the game, Dan says. Yeah, you're a legend. Freedom of negative mind, intent, PPA. Yes, Cockney Buddha. Sounds like a plan. Energy follows energy. Negative mind, then negative energy. Most definitely, dude. Preaching to the choir with that one. Anyway, guys and girls, I've kept you long enough. I hope you enjoyed the show. I apologise for not pulling off the surf report. We'll work on that one. And don't forget next week, there'll be a whole load more segments. There will be maybe a guest, but I'm not going to say it because if I say it, it won't happen. Whereas if I leave you guessing, you'll come back for more. I hope you do. I hope you go away from the show. I hope you're in a good vibe and just set up for a little bit of a laugh. And most of all, inspired to go and get after whatever it is that you want to go and get after. 
how big, how small, it don't matter. It's your life, you choose in which direction you wanna walk. And if you don't wanna follow the rest of the crowds, make sure you do your best to beat your own path and enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, and most of all, enjoy the destination. On that, have a fantastic evening. Absolutely thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the times out of your evenings, afternoons, mornings, or nights, whichever it may be, and wherever it is you are in the globe. I appreciate you for taking the time out of such a valuable thing, which is life, to tune in and listen to this Fruit Loop chat and rant a little bit from time to time. Thank you so much, guys, girls. I hope to see you same time, same place, the next weekend, 10.45 GMT or PM GMT. YouTube, 30 year old Grom. Until then, stay safe, stay focused, stay positive, stay awesome. And most of all, just stay getting after it. Have a good one. See you next time.